people of the Bani Israel and the followers of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam were forced to make this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When? If I revise briefly, when with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and his followers seeing the belief and seeing the righteous deeds of the people and the followers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them and guided them and released them from the clutches of the cruel and the tyrant rulers and blessed them with freedom in the desert. They settled in the desert and then they were showered with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were given the clouds and they were blessed with the twelve springs and they were given the heavenly provisions to eat and to drink. And then they were thankless and they were greatly ungrateful. And during this period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after settling them in the desert, and then showering their blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam for 40 days meeting. And the purpose of this meeting was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give them the orders, the commandments of their sharia. The do's, the don'ts, the permissible, the non-permissible, the concept of sin and the concept of the virtues all had to be given to them. And the orders of Allah had to be, had to be assigned to them. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was called for a 40-day meeting on the Mount of Tur. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Hazrat Musa alayhi salam his initial 10 commandments. And these 10 commandments, they were not only, they were not only taught and informed to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, they were handed over to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, written on stone slates and it were these stone slates with the written Ten Commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam returned to his people in the desert from the Mount Thur. And when he asked them, he handed them over, he educated them with these, with these Ten Commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we will be going through soon inshallah after the verse 83. And he asked them, to have faith in them and have belief in them and to act according to them and to accept these ten commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very obstinately and very stubbornly did the people of Bani Israel refuse to have faith, belief and obedience to these ten commandments. These ten commandments were handed over to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam written on, written on stone slates. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was very well aware of the temperament of people of Bani Israel, how stubborn, how obstinate and how disobedient they were. They were handed over these ten commandments written on, wood, on the stone slates so that they could see it by their own eyes. So that they could actually see it with their own eyes and touch, touch them with their own hands so that it could, touching and seeing all that could make belief and faith and obedience easy and possible for them. And then they were engraved on these wooden slates so that with their hands they could not rub them off, they could not delete them, they could not change or alter them. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them written and engraved on the wooden slates but still seeing them, touching them, they still failed to believe and act according to them. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered that the Mount Tur be tilted on them. And the Mount Tur was tilted on them in an inclined position and it seemed to them as if it would fall on the settlement as a punishment or a torment of Allah. So in this situation, the Bani Israel got scared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually wanted to scare them off. So they were scared. They feared the torment of Allah. And they feared that if they disobey, the Mount Thur would just fall on them and crush them. So in this state of fear, the people of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the fear of the Mount falling on them, they promised 
and they made a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they agreed to make a covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his obedience. Then what happened when the mount came back to its normal position and the fear and the scare went off, they just broke off the covenant and they again came back to their state of disobedience. Now when Allah ordered them to make a covenant of obedience, what did Allah order them while taking them, while taking from them a covenant? Allah said, Khuzu. Khuzu means take, to take, to grip, to hold tight. Ma atakum. Whatever you have been, you have been given. Whatever you have been blessed, whatever you have been taught and educated. Allah said that what I have given you as commandments, as the Ten Commandments of Musa, take them, grip them and hold tight to them. Hold to them like how? بِقُذْوَةٍ With full power, with willpower, with strength, with full determination, with full concentration and with full strength. And then do what? وَاسْقُرُ مَا فِيهِ Remember and mention what was in these Ten Commandments. And then Allah promised and Allah told them that if they adopt the style and manner of, of teachings they were given, if they adopt this style and this mannerism of connecting with the teachings of Allah in Torah and with these Ten Commandments, then what will be the outcome? What will be the result? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You do all this, with the Ten Commandments, hold them tight and hold them with full concentration and full strength and full willpower and focus your concentration to them. If you hold tight to the commandments of Allah, then you might be what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You might be God-fearing and you might get pious and righteous. So Allah ordered them a manner which would make them develop the fear of and piety of Allah and the fear of hereafter and become pious and virtuous. Allah ordered and suggested and promised that if the Jews could connect to the book of Allah given to them, hold it tight, remember and mention the teachings of the book, they would become God-fearing and develop piety. Now we need to stop here and we need to think that if Jews... If those Jews whose, whose book was not complete, it was not perfect, and the book whose protection and whose security Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not taken, the, not taken the responsibility of protecting and keeping it secure, and the book was not protected and not secured, even holding tight and connecting to it would make them pious and righteous, then if we, if we, the followers of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the students of Quran, if we hold tight and connect to Quran, we remember its teachings and messages, and we mention the messages and orders of Quran, then how surely would we become God-fearing? Would we become righteous and pious? Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Look, there is absolutely no doubt. I am leaving behind myself two things. Kitabullah wa sunnati. The book of Allah and my sunnah and the mannerisms of Prophet If you hold tight to them, you will never go astray. And then, in another words of Prophet he said, Abshiru. Good news, Abshiru, one hand of Quran and the book of Allah is in your hand and the other hand and the other end is in the hands of Allah. If you hold tight to it, you will never lose the path. Which path? The path we've been asking for, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, the path to Jannah. 
So revise. How do we need to connect to the Quran? بِقُوَّةٍ With strength, with power, and with full concentration. Exactly, exactly the way we hold of a precious and valuable and expensive commodities. Like I give you an example. If you are holding one of your French crystal bowls, or one of your Queen Anne dishes, how would you hold it? Just with one hand, letting it hang freely, dangling around? No. You would hold it with both your hands. Strongly, carefully, with a dense concentration. Not looking here and there. Not being diverted. Focusing. And walking slowly and carefully. So that is, we, that is exactly how we need to connect with the best book of Allah. The most expensive the most precious, the most valuable thing we have, we possess is Quran. So how do we need to connect to it? We need to make a strong bond. We need to be careful. We need to be focused. We need to concentrate while reading. And we do not need to look here and there, here, here and there. We need to hold the Quran with both our hands. This is the rope of Allah. And we don't have to hold the Qur'an with one hand. And with the second hand, we let the second hand free to accept the worldly orders, the customs of the family and the clans, the norms of the society, the rules and the regulations of the state which are contradictory to the Qur'an. Just holding to the Qur'an and Sunnah with one hand and the rest of the hand we are taking the other things. No! We need to hold to Qur'an and connect with Qur'an with both our hands. With full strength, full concentration, full focus, with, with full, full, full willpower. Not diverting here and there. And just concentrating on the teachings of Qur'an. And secondly, after holding firmly to the Qur'an in this manner, we need to do what? We need to وَذْقُرُ مَا فِيهِ we need to remember. We need to remember the messages and teachings of Quran. And secondly, we need to keep on mentioning, discussing and repeating and talking about the words of Quran because this is what Zalikal Kitabula Raibafi Hudalil Muttaqin. This is the best book, and there is absolutely no doubt that it is a book of guidance for all whom? For the people who are God fearing. And third thing is to acquire piety and to acquire the fear of Allah and to become pious. What do we need to do? We need to connect with Quran and we need to mention the Quran and we need to remember the Quran. Now repeat the two supplications to acquire piety and to be pious. Allahumma ati nafsi Taqwaha. Repeat again. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. And then there is another supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. I repeat again. And repeat with me, say the words again. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Ameen ya Rabbul Alameen.